Hi, it's Katrina. Bella Gossi. In Turkey, some shepherds were out herding sheep when they discovered an entire underground city. Researchers have actually been in the area since 2014 looking for underground settlements. They were shocked when a group of locals from the Gesi district approached them with what they had found. The researchers went to take a look and couldn't believe their eyes. It was a legitimate underground city containing over 52 chambers. According to the researchers, members of the Obruk Cave Research Organization, this is proof that there are underground cities everywhere in Turkey, built between the 6th and 11th centuries by Christians. They also discovered a church built into the mountainside, as well as some other very old buildings. There are other caves nearby, but this one is truly enormous. It's the first one they have found with over 50 individual chambers inside. They believe the city likely got bigger as the population slowly grew. Why were people here living underground and building maze-like cave cities? Researchers say underground settlements were inhabited because they protected people from being invaded and from unpleasant weather. They were never meant to be long-term housing solutions, but rather temporary retreats in times of danger. This cave city contains a drainage system, storage for food, and would have even had shops where the locals could buy whatever they wanted. Could you imagine living underground? Let me know in the comments below. The Orvieto Underground The ancient people of Orvieto had a city above ground, built on a rocky bluff to form a natural defensive barrier against enemies. Despite having perfect access to this incredible city with the sky overhead, they started digging an additional city underground. They managed to carve a complete medieval city underneath the flat summit of a volcanic bluff, a place that has been occupied by ancient human beings since the days of the Etruscans, who were the people that came before the Romans about 2,500 years ago. Archaeologists believe the underground city may have started when the Etruscans dug wells deep beneath their city to collect and channel rainwater. The wells dug by the Etruscans helped withstand an invasion when Rome besieged their great city for two long years. But it fell in the year 264 BC. The Etruscans were wiped out, but their city remained standing. The city became known as Orvieto, and its occupants continued digging deep into the Middle Ages. They expanded the wells to create a labyrinth of unbelievable proportions. Not only were there wells and cisterns, but also quarries, cellars, tunnels, and galleries. All these spaces overlap and connect through a dizzying system of passageways. By the time the place was finally abandoned, there were 1,200 permanent structures dug into the rock. There is a city above and a city right beneath it. Nobles who live above ground had escape tunnels that led into the underground passages in case they needed to flee the city. German Cave Town In the year 1855, a cluster of cave houses were dug into the rock near the German village of Langenstein. Back then, there were about 2,000 inhabitants here, living a quiet life in the mountains. Five of the cave dwellings are still preserved today, with the rest of them having fallen into ruins. The locals probably got their inspiration from a group of underground caverns on the mountaintop overlooking their village. It had once been the location of a great castle, and to this day is riddled with natural caves. People lived inside the caves back in the 1700s. Because they were formed naturally, it was easier to dwell inside of an existing cave than to build a house. Makes sense, right? Plus, they were protected from people living in the valley below by hiding inside the mountain caverns. And here's where we can really see how the world changed in the 19th century. It was in the 1800s when the population of Germany doubled and people started having their lands seized by the government. There was mass emigration and internal migration, and rural people who had lived as farmers for generations suddenly found themselves broke and hungry. This was part of the motivation for the Langenstein cave houses. A local farm owner used the caves to house migrant workers while paying them extraordinarily low wages. Would you work for little or no wages if housing was guaranteed? What about a cave house? Let me know in the comments. The Ajanta Caves The Ajanta Caves in India were forgotten for thousands of years. Buddhist monks carved these amazing caves into a horseshoe-shaped cliff face high up in the mountains, about 280 miles from Mumbai. They were discovered completely by accident in the year 1819 by a tiger hunter named John Smith. They had been unknown to anyone except the wild animals living in the hills. 
The Ajanta Caves were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983, with archaeologists saying they were probably abandoned by whoever created them roughly 1,500 years earlier. Here's pretty much everything we know about the creation of the caves. It was likely Buddhist monks who made them, filling every nook and cranny with some of the most impressive artwork found anywhere in India. The painters, masons, and sculptors must have been of the highest order to complete their amazing masterpieces here. There are unbelievable paintings combining Greek and Indian culture, likely thanks to the expeditions of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC. There are also images of Buddha, statues of princes and princesses, and one giant sculpture of the sleeping Buddha. But we don't know who lived here or who carved the caves for sure. They must have done it around 2,000 years ago, creating an entire city of cave monasteries where monks lived and meditated. But why they abandoned the place 500 years later is a total mystery. Colombia's Salt Cathedral In the South American country of Colombia, there is a famous church deep underground. It's known as the Salt Cathedral, and the tunnel leading down into it is like taking a journey into the underworld. It's dark, wet, and smells strongly of sulfur. As you move deeper down the corridor, you begin to see the amazing relics left behind by the people who dug the ridiculously large shaft. There are statues of Roman Catholic icons, images of the Archangel Gabriel, and even the Stations of the Cross carved out of pure salt. The Salt Cathedral is 600 feet underground, located in a former salt mine near the capital of Bogotá. It's an architectural wonder, carved within the caverns that were abandoned by the miners over two centuries ago. There is a massive cathedral found here, with details like incredible chandeliers illuminated by purple lights and jammed full of worshippers on every major holiday. But there are also the remains of the underground abodes the salt miners used to live in. They didn't live there permanently, but had built a small city underground to make mining operations easier. It was the salt miners who first carved a sanctuary inside the caverns. It was there, in a small niche, where they prayed to the Virgin of the Rosary of Guasa, patron saint of miners. They prayed for protection from the toxic gases and from the occasional explosion. This was back in the 1930s, though operations started here in the early 1800s. When the mine shut down because of structural problems, sculptors were brought in to build the cathedral. It's now one of the biggest tourist attractions in Bogotá. It might not be that ancient, but it's still a fascinating underground world rich with history. Big thank you to Bella Ed and Thunder Raider! Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these! Nushabad Nushabad translates roughly to City of Cold, Tasty Water. In the days of the Sasanian Empire, which ruled over Persia until the Muslim conquest of the 7th century, a king was on a journey across the central desert. He stopped one day to drink water from a small well. The water was so clear and cold that he ordered a city to be built around it. It was named Anushabad, then later Nushabad. The city itself is approximately 1,500 years old. But this city is unique for one main reason. It's entirely underground. Not only was the city built because of its direct access to some of the best water in the region, but also to escape the scorching heat of the desert. The underground city was carved about 60 feet deep, reachable through several openings at the surface. People actually lived down here in houses and could reach important places on the surface by going through subterranean tunnels. There is one other feature of the underground city that's a little different from others. It was built with three main levels, each one designed to be harder to reach than the last. This was to stop invading armies from perforating every last inch of the city. Plus, all the passages were made curved so that the inhabitants could ambush their enemies as they tried to get into their anthill. There were even booby traps, holes dug in the middle of rooms and covered over so that the invaders would fall in them and break their necks. Ani Ani is a city over 5,000 years old located in Armenia near the border of Turkey. It's been known under many different names, such as the City of 1001 Churches and the City of 40 Gates. At its height, it was just as influential as some of the other major cities in Mesopotamia, like Constantinople. In the 11th century, the city of Ani had over 100,000 people living within its walls. Excavations have revealed the earliest humans lived here in the Bronze Age. Ani didn't really become a major fortress until thousands of years later in the 5th century AD. It truly began to grow in the year 961, under the rule of King Ashot III of the Bagratid dynasty. Within just 50 years, 
Ani turned from a formidable fortress into a giant medieval city unlike anything the world has seen since. In the 1880s, locals stumbled upon an entrance into a subterranean realm of dark caverns and large, spacious rooms. As it turns out, there was an entire city hidden underneath the surface of Ani that nobody knew about. It wasn't until excavations in 1915 that Italian archaeologists started really understanding the depth of it all. We now know there are over 823 underground structures in Ani. There are underground stables, monasteries where monks used to live, tombs where people were buried, and dozens of dwellings. Yet there are no historical records that even mention an underground world beneath the city, leaving archaeologists unable to figure out why it was built. Egypt Underground A team of archaeologists from Austria used radar imaging to discover an underground Egyptian city. They wanted to see just how extensive the ruins of a 3,500-year-old city are, and this led to the unexpected discovery. The researchers were looking at the ancient capital of Avaris, once the seat of the Hyksos invaders. This was a group of warriors who entered Egypt from Asia and took over the whole country for 100 years. They ruled Egypt between 1664 and 1569 BC, then were beaten back and pushed out of the country. According to Irene Mueller, head of the research team, almost all the city is underground. The Hyksos didn't actually carve the city out of rock to be their subterranean stronghold. Instead, it's been the thousands of years of desertion that have literally turned the city into an underground mystery. The team only managed to identify houses, a harbor area, neighborhoods, and other pieces of the old capital by scanning the ground. Everything is deep under the dirt, including temples, cemeteries, and long-lost avenues. This is just one of those things that happens to ancient cities after they're abandoned. Plus, the densely populated area has been heavily farmed since the 1970s, which has helped bury the city even more. It may not seem possible, but the same thing could happen to any major city. Even somewhere like Detroit could be buried under feet of dirt in 3,000 years. Chislehurst Caves The origin of the Chislehurst Caves isn't exactly clear. Even though they are called caves, they are entirely man-made. Experts believe that they may have come to life several thousand years ago, when ancient people carved passages underground to extract flint deposits. However, nobody really knows for sure. The cave system is located under the capital of London, England. Parts of the system date back at least 8,000 years, though the first mention of them comes from a medieval document in 1250 AD. It's all really quite confusing. In the 20th century, William Nichols of the British Archaeological Association guessed they had been carved either by the Romans the Saxons or the Celts. But this doesn't really help us get to the bottom of who made the caves and who lived in them. To make matters more confusing, the entire system was turned into an underground bunker in World War II. Thousands of years of history was torn apart as the military began storing explosive materials and ammunition in the dark pockets of the caverns. Electric lighting was brought in, running water, and even an air ventilation system. At its peak, 15,000 Londoners were sleeping in bunkers down here to keep safe from the German bombing campaigns. It only got worse. The caves were used as a music venue in the 1960s. Basically now, all history has been lost. They are now abandoned underneath the suburbs of South London, and archaeologists know pretty much nothing about how they were formed. Civilization Under the Earth Mainstream archaeologists and historians agree human civilization emerged between 10,000 and 12,000 years ago. It's not something that's debated by a lot of people. Yet Dr. Alexander Koltepin, a geologist and the director of the Natural Science Research Center in Russia, believes something dramatically different. Alexander has analyzed ancient underground structures found across the Mediterranean, identifying similarities between them. He believes there was once a massive underground city spanning much of Europe. He also believes the structures date back up to one million years ago. According to him, there was once an advanced civilization living underneath the surface of the planet. One such piece of evidence comes from Antalya in Turkey, at the Jerno Cleave site. This is an ancient city that most archaeologists believe was built in the Middle Ages, but not Alexander. He says the materials indicate it's been around for at least 500,000 years and was once underground. But because of geological shifts, the underground structure slowly pushed itself to the surface. He says there are plenty of complexes across Europe just like it. They were once underground but either plunged into the sea 
or were pushed upward because of the Earth's moving crust. But to be totally honest, I wouldn't put too much stock into what this guy says. His belief is that some advanced civilization, maybe not even human, lived in an impossibly massive underground structure that spanned from Turkey to England. And this was during a time when humans hadn't even fully evolved yet. Maybe he's right, but there doesn't seem to be much proof. Burroughs Cave The Burroughs Cave was supposedly discovered in 1982 by a man named Russell E. Burroughs. However, nobody actually knows where the cave is. The issue is that most mainstream archaeologists don't even believe the story behind its discovery is real. They call it a hoax, saying Russell Burroughs is a fraud. But here's how the story goes. Russell was living in the town of Olney, Illinois. He located the mysterious cave somewhere in Richland County. He claimed to have found it while hiking alone in the rural hillsides, searching for buckles and other leftover pieces of equipment from the Civil War. While moseying through the wilderness with a metal detector, hoping to find treasures, he couldn't believe his luck when he came across the entrance to a cave and discovered a whole treasure hoard of priceless ancient artifacts inside it. There were supposedly coins, carvings, statues, and relics inscribed in languages he believed to be Phoenician and even Iberian. It was a pretty wild discovery, especially coming from a place like Illinois. Russell claimed he had come across the remains of 13 underground crypts, but he refused to give anyone the exact location because he didn't want the artifacts to be stolen and the place to be pillaged. In the end, he couldn't even produce any legitimate artifacts, and the whole story ended up being dismissed. Today, we don't have a single physical piece of evidence from the supposed cave, and nobody has ever been able to find it. So, was it an authentic discovery or a hoax? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Ancient Underground Secrets Deep in Grotte de Cusac, a mysterious ancient cave in France, there is a burial site from the Paleolithic era. It's an amazing burial plot because archaeologists believe it was also the site of mysterious prehistoric rituals carried out between 25,000 and 30,000 years ago. Archaeologists have found drawings of horses and mammoths galloping across the rock walls. They have found skeletons in shallow graves, smudged with red pigment and some of their bones missing. Just about every discovery deep underground in Grotte de Cusac has left archaeologists both shocked and baffled. By far, the most interesting part of the burial site is the intricate artwork painted on the cave walls. Considering how old the burials are here, it's unbelievable to think the prehistoric people were decorating the graves of the dead with complex murals. It wasn't until the ancient Egyptians that tombs and graveyards started being decorated with visions of the afterlife, left behind for no one to see except the dead. Yet here in France, it looks as though the primitive people from the Stone Age had already started leaving symbols and pictures in places of death. The artwork inside the caves couldn't have possibly been made for the living, as it's only been found in places where burials were located. Plus, these are in some of the darkest recesses of the caves, where the living couldn't exactly have enjoyed the art. Mysterious Underground Chambers There are over 700 mysterious tunnels in Bavaria. Why are they described as mysterious? No one knows what their purpose is. Archaeologists are unsure if they were built as graves, as highways for the souls of the dead, or as hideouts during times of invasion. A dairy farmer named Betty Greihanner and her husband recently came upon one of these tunnels by accident. One of the cows on their dairy farm had gotten stuck up to her hips in a crater that opened up in the earth. After they were able to free the cow, the couple realized the hole was a lot bigger than it looked. Betty's husband lowered himself into the gaping darkness and began to go down a diagonal tunnel into the earth like the tomb of some pharaoh. Before he knew it, he'd gotten so deep underground that he couldn't hear anything from the surface above. He was having a hard time breathing and had to rush back to the surface. He was having a hard time breathing and had to rush back to the surface. This is only one of the hundreds of strange tunnels found throughout Bavaria. They are not all connected, at least not that archaeologists can tell. They each run about 82 feet diagonally downwards with no obvious explanation. Archaeologists haven't found any artifacts inside them to help solve the mystery either. In local legend, the holes are said to have been built by elves and occupied by gnomes. There are also legends that say the tunnels were escape passages from castles and that they were used by a race of troublesome goblins. The tunnels can be up to around 150 feet long at maximum with the tiniest of them being so narrow that a person needs to crawl through the cramped corridor. Even after finding so many, experts still don't have a good guess as to why they were dug in the earth. 
and only in Bavaria of all places. What do you think the purpose was behind these mysterious tunnels? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Ancient Cave Art in America In 1980, a group of recreational cavers entered an unknown passage near Knoxville, Tennessee. They were exploring a new cave system and wanted to get into the darkest part of the subterranean lair, the dark zone where no light shines. The cavers went deeper and deeper into the network of tunnels. They trudged through a stream, squeezed through thin passages, burrowed through mud, and eventually made it into the dark zone of the cave. If they hadn't been professional cavers, there is no way they would have ever made it into such a remote and difficult place. It's hard to think that ordinary people would have journeyed so deep into the cave without any equipment, and for the sheer fun of it. Yet when these explorers came into the dark zone, when the light from their headlamps shined on the walls, they saw lines etched into the rock. Upon closer inspection, they realized they were looking at ancient glyphs carved on the walls of the cave, presumably thousands and thousands of years old. They beheld images of animals, transformational creatures that appeared similar to science fiction monsters, as well as ordinary animals like snakes and birds. Archaeologists eventually made their way into the site, what's now called Mud Glyph Cave. Charles Faulkner was the first professional to take a look at the mysterious glyphs, deciding they were probably made by the Mississippian culture 800 years ago. But why in the world they went so deep into the cave, into the very darkest part of it, to draw these images is a total mystery. Ever since this discovery, there have been 92 similar cave art sites found from Tennessee to Wisconsin. They are everywhere in North America, and always in the darkest zone of the cave. Chambers Under Jerusalem Mysterious underground chambers have been discovered near the western wall of Jerusalem, carved into bedrock and previously hidden for 1,400 years. The subterranean rooms were discovered no more than 120 feet from the most important holy site in the Jewish world. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, these chambers were discovered beneath the mosaic floor of a building from the Byzantine era, basically just basement rooms underneath the house. Mind you, these are very old basement rooms. Archaeologists found niches carved into the walls of the underground structures, likely used as shelves and storage spaces. They also found artifacts like clay cooking vessels, oil lamps, a stone mug, and a basin for holding water, all from 2,000 years ago. What's truly amazing about these underground chambers is that they are now some of the only remaining pieces of the original Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem as it was before it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. When the Romans descended on the city, they destroyed everything and then rebuilt from scratch. These underground chambers were undoubtedly once part of the house. It was then built over by the Romans, who installed a mosaic floor right over the hidden chamber's ceiling. It's shout out time! Big thank you to Carrie Aubrey and Candy A. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here for more videos about incredible discoveries. Egyptian Cave Statues In the early 1900s, an archaeologist for the Smithsonian Institute named Kincaid was hired to seek out amazing discoveries in the West. His search for treasure eventually brought him to the Grand Canyon, where he discovered the unbelievable, deep underground in a dark, mysterious cave. He came across Egyptian statues and other relics from a lost civilization. Not only did he discover incredible artifacts that could have only come from the Egyptians, but he also found hieroglyphics and a crypt, and all nearly a mile beneath the surface of the earth. Kincaid claimed the main passage descending into this mysterious Egyptian underworld was at the floor of the canyon in a remote section away from any trail. The past descended into a labyrinth of burial tombs, homes, altars, temples, shrines, and everything else an Egyptian society might need who is living beneath the floor of the Grand Canyon. You might find this story a bit suspicious. In fact, most people don't believe this actually happened, especially not mainstream scientists. The Smithsonian Institute has denied the story. No one has ever been able to actually find the cave since Mr. Kincaid, and we have no idea where all of these supposed artifacts went. Could there have been an ancient race of people living in the caves in the Grand Canyon? Maybe not Egyptians, but somebody else? Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already! The Secret Under Stonehenge A mysterious underground megastructure has been discovered near Stonehenge in England. Archaeologists have known since 1916 that there are strange holes surrounding one of the greatest monuments of ancient people. But it wasn't until recently that they used ground-penetrating radar to see just how deep the holes go. 
Each mysterious hole is about 16 feet deep and 65 feet across. In total, 20 of them have been discovered. They were dug 4,500 years ago, just a stone's throw from Stonehenge. But over the years, these giant holes filled with dirt and were overgrown, which is why nobody ever saw them until now. These giant holes have been found around the site of Durrington Walls. This is the name for the huge village two miles from Stonehenge, where the builders had lived and feasted over centuries of construction. Judging by the underground pits, it looks like the village had its very own henge. The holes were once filled with huge pieces of rock that formed a massive circle around the entire village, yet archaeologists aren't sure why. The huge circle may have been used as a border to keep unwanted people away from the inside of the village. It may even have been used for astrological purposes, much like Stonehenge itself. Since the rocks are missing and only the pits remain, filled up with dirt and invisible to the naked eye, archaeologists are having a very difficult time solving the mystery. Hadrian's Villa Construction of Hadrian's Villa, 15 miles east of Rome, began in the year 118. It was just after Hadrian became emperor and was completed about 10 years later. When a group of Italian investigators were looking at a hole on the grounds of the villa, concealed by bushes, they came across an underground secret. It turns out there was an entire network of roads underneath the emperor's great estate. According to Marco Placidi, the director of the group that made the discovery, the real grandeur of the villa is actually beneath it. This is one of the more interesting estates from the Roman Empire. It was designed by Hadrian himself, based on ideas from Egypt and Greece. His estate covered a massive area of 600 acres and was organized like an ancient city. It had palaces, multiple libraries and theaters, thermal baths for relaxation, and landscaped gardens. It also had underground passageways reserved for Hadrian's slaves. Hadrian specifically designed the underground passageway so that his thousands of slaves could move from one part of the estate to another without getting in the emperor's way. The tunnels are so big that ox carts could be moved through them with food and supplies. There were also sewers and water pipes down there. Much like the underground service passageways in major theme parks, these tunnels kept the estate running without revealing the labor who made it happen. Shape-shifting hunters On the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, Adam Brum from Griffith University in Brisbane came across the entrance to a cave. The entrance was located high on a limestone cliff face, only reachable by climbing a fig tree and then scaling vertically up the rock wall. It seemed like a pretty unlikely place to make any archaeological discoveries. However, it was perfect. Inside the cliffside cave, Adam found ancient paintings going back 44,000 years. This is some of the oldest cave art ever found, and it depicts terrible creatures unlike anything painted by ancient cave-dwelling humans. The creatures painted inside this unreachable cave seem to be part man and part animal. They look like hunters, except they have animal snouts, tails, and all sorts of other animalistic features. It may not seem that incredible, but remember, this was a very long time ago. It's now one of the earliest pieces of evidence of human creativity. It could even be the very oldest evidence of the human capacity for imagination. Tens of thousands of years ago in Indonesia, an ancient human or a human ancestor crawled up the side of the cliff, sat down with dark red pigment, and let their imagination run wild. It may have been the first time such a thing ever happened to a person. A Tomb of Mummies 30 mummies have been discovered underground in Egypt, at the bottom of a structure that had been scorched with fire 2,000 years ago. The bizarre discovery was made in Aswan, in the southernmost part of Egypt near the border of Sudan, or the ancient kingdom of Nubia. Archaeologists first found the entrance to the underground tomb, then journeyed into its depths to uncover the 30 mummified people. They don't appear to have been that important. They range from the elderly to the newborn. It was likely a family tomb, with everyone inside related to one another through five or six generations. Believe it or not, this is only one of the 300 recently discovered tombs around the mausoleum of the Aga Khan. The reason this tomb stands out is that it was found inside an above-ground structure. The other 299 tombs were dug into rocky hills or immediately under the ground, but this was beneath a standing structure, what may have been used as a place for ritual sacrifice. 
Archaeologist Patrizia Piacentini from the University of Milan says the building above the tomb was probably used for sacrificing animals to the god Knum, protector of the fertile lands around the Nile. This theory is helped by the fact that the whole place is scorched, probably from fires during ceremonies. However, Patrizia admitted the fire may have also been from grave robbers who went down into the tomb and burnt everything. The Space Eye NASA space telescopes have discovered a giant cosmic eye. The telescopes looked into the Helix Nebula where they captured one of the most amazing celestial phenomena ever, a glowing space eyeball, the likes of which we have never seen before. But just what is this great eye in the sky? The Helix Nebula, aka NGC 7293, consists of a dying star about 650 light years from us in the Aquarius constellation. This dying star is what scientists call a planetary nebula. NASA used their Spitzer Space Telescope to capture long wavelength infrared light, along with their Galaxy Evolution Explorer to look at ultraviolet light. Looking at these different light sources at once shows a huge glowing pupil in the center of a light burst, like the eye of God. You can only see it when viewing the ultraviolet radiation and infrared wavelengths at the same time. Believe it or not, this incredible phenomenon is a sneak peek at what will happen in our own solar system in around 5 billion years. Our Sun will eventually turn into a planetary nebula as well when it reaches the end of its life, fresh out of hydrogen and helium for the fusion that takes place in its core. When this happens, our Sun will expel its gaseous layers into an explosion of glowing shells. It will then become its very own cosmic eye, looking like the eye of Sauron depicted in the Lord of the Rings films in space. The explosive death of a giant star. For the first time in history, astronomers have witnessed one of the most powerful space phenomena. They saw a red supergiant star in its last days of life, just before it exploded. They actually saw it die and transform into a supernova. The star was first found back in 2020 by a team of researchers with Northwestern University and the University of California. They used the Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii to keep tabs on the star until it died. According to astrophysicist Wynne Jacobson Gallen, it was dramatic and violent, unlike anything we have ever seen before. The reason this is so incredible is that supernovas are the biggest explosions that we know about. They only really happen with massive stars, ones that are around 12 times bigger than our own. And even though we've seen them before, we've only ever seen them after the event has happened. This is after gas and debris has been exploded out into space. The debris from these cosmic explosions is actually what's needed to form new stars and to produce the elements found right here on Earth. This particular supernova is in a faraway galaxy over 120 million light years from us. What that means is that it actually exploded 120 million years ago, and we were only able to see it happen now. Researchers got lucky and were able to watch the star as it got brighter and brighter, spitting out gas before it blew up. The actual explosion took less than a minute. Glass rain. On exoplanet HD 189733b, the rain is a literal nightmare. In fact, the entire planet is a nightmare. Looking through a telescope, it seems to be a rather ordinary world out in space, like a big blue marble in the middle of nothing. It does indeed look bright blue, with little swirls of white, just like a real marble. But the blue should not be mistaken for the same friendly skies we have here on Earth. The weather on this planet is terrifying and deadly. The wind on HD 189733b blows at gusts of up to 5,400 miles per hour. Just think about how phenomenal that is for a second. The wind is blowing at seven times the speed of sound. If you were to try to step foot on the planet, your spaceship would get caught in a whirlwind so fast and so powerful, you would literally be whipped around the planet in an endless cyclone. And then there's the rain to contend with. The planet has one of the rarest weather systems, one that produces glass rain. It literally rains glass, and because of the intense winds, it rains glass sideways. This means you would be ripped to shreds during a rainstorm 
as you were hurdling around the marble in the endless hurricane. The blue color of the planet isn't a suggestion of tropical oceans like those here on Earth, but rather of a torched atmosphere that has clouds full of silica particles. What do you think a planet that rains glass would look like? Tell me in the comments. The Butterfly Nebula The Butterfly Nebula has got to be one of the most gorgeous phenomena anywhere in the universe. It's known scientifically as NGC 6302 or Caldwell 69. It's a bipolar planetary nebula found in the constellation Scorpius. The structure inside the nebula, the one that looks like a beautiful red glowing butterfly, is one of the most complex things ever observed inside a planetary nebula. Remember the great cosmic eye we talked about earlier? This is kind of the same thing, but not quite. In the center of the butterfly is a star, same as with the eye. But this star is one of the hottest that scientists have ever identified. The surface temperature is upwards of 250,000 degrees Celsius or 450,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Even for a white dwarf, it's unbelievably hot. The Butterfly Nebula was first identified in 2009 by the Hubble Space Telescope. The reason it looks like a butterfly has to do with a dense equatorial disk of gas and dust. The disk has formed a bipolar structure, kind of like an hourglass, what we think of as the butterfly's wings. But all the glowing light and tiny dots you see inside the wings are actually ionization walls and knots. It's all crystalline water ice, quartz, silicates, and other space particles. Pretty incredible, right? Galactic Collisions The Hubble Space Telescope captured a fascinating phenomenon in which one galaxy appeared to be on a collision course with another. The image taken by the telescope is truly unique. It shows spiral galaxy NGC 105 plunging into the edge of its neighboring galaxy as if the two were about to merge. And while it may look like that, that's not actually the case. It's just an illusion. NGC 105 is 215 million light years away from us, hiding in the constellation Pisces. Even though it appears to be crashing into its neighbor, it's just the result of the way that the two galaxies are aligned in the night sky. Its neighbor is actually quite far away, at a distance that's not even known to astronomers. It's all due to trick photography, a complete fluke because of where the two galaxies are in relation to NASA's Hubble telescope. It's like if you jump at the right angle with a photographer crouched, getting a shot of you leaping over one of the pyramids. Only this is on a much larger, and more amazing scale. But there's something even more amazing. Astronomers were focusing on NGC 105 because it contains a pair of astrological phenomena. It has Cepheid variables, meaning it contains a rare class of pulsating stars. It also has cataclysmic supernova explosions, meaning the galaxy contains several stars that are in the catastrophic death strokes of their lives. These two phenomena, because they produce such extraordinary light, are used by scientists to measure distances through space. NGC 105 is now helping astronomers figure out how fast the universe is expanding by acting as a kind of marker in their galactic map. Black Holes Black holes are arguably the most fascinating cosmic phenomena most people are aware of. A black hole is formed when a very large star collapses and then continues to grow by absorbing cosmic energy and merging with other black holes. Scientists have known about these for years, especially since they're so easy to identify. Because a black hole sucks in any light that gets near it, they can be seen in space as literal black holes or voids of light. Plus, they give off so much radiation that astronomers can see a very specific type of radiation light leaking out of them. It's not real light, but rather only visible using special instruments. Astronomers even know that there's a supermassive black hole, meaning one that is ridiculously huge and powerful, inside our very own Milky Way galaxy. And here's where things get terrifying. According to Dr. Alessandro Sfondrini from the Institute for Theoretical Physics, a black hole could delete the universe. Yes, the entire universe. It's not going to happen yet, but perhaps in the future. When a black hole becomes large enough, it could potentially swallow every single thing. One black hole gets so big it merges with another, 
The same thing happens throughout the universe until all matter in existence is sucked into a void without light or gravity. The only good news is that it won't happen for a few trillion years. What do you think of the theory that all of existence could be eaten by a black hole the size of the entire universe? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Diamond Super Earth There are so many planets in the universe that it's hard to even imagine them all. And while most are fairly boring pieces of rock, there is one alien planet that's something of a phenomenon. It's called Planet 55 Cancri E, and scientists say it's the very first planet they've ever discovered that's literally made out of diamonds. An entire planet filled to the brim with a simple mineral that people here on Earth spent thousands of dollars to wear around their necks. How is this possible? It all comes down to the ratio of carbon to oxygen. At the very center of the solar system, located 40 light years from our own, scientists identified a carbon to oxygen ratio of over one. This suggested that the planet located at the very center of the system was made primarily of diamonds. The planet itself is a super-Earth, about twice as large as our planet, with a mass eight times greater. Its chemical makeup, in theory, could mean that its surface is a rocky terrain of diamond instead of standard rock. And it's all because of insanely high carbon levels. Jupiter's spot. When it comes to space phenomena, one of the rarest and most unique features of our specific solar system is the great red spot of Jupiter. It was first observed by the amateur astronomer Samuel Heinrich Schwab in 1831. This tells us the storm inside the red spot has been going on for at least 150 years, but scientists believe it's been significantly longer than that. But just what's going on in the great red spot that's so interesting? It's basically just one massive storm. It's a storm over twice as wide as our own planet because of how big the planet Jupiter itself is. Just a single storm is bigger than two Earths combined. The storm circles the southern hemisphere, with winds along the edge reaching somewhere around 425 miles per hour, 683 kilometers per hour. That's double the strongest hurricane ever recorded on Earth. The big mystery is that scientists can't figure out what started the storm hundreds or thousands of years ago. They also don't know why it just continues moving north to west, then south again. It could theoretically go on forever. In fact, because Jupiter doesn't have a solid surface, the storm has never technically made landfall. Rather than a surface, Jupiter has a sky over 44 miles, 70.8 kilometers deep, filled with layers of ammonia ice, hydrosulfide, and water ice vapor. It's all balanced over an ocean of liquid hydrogen. Underneath the ocean of liquid hydrogen is actually the core of Jupiter, something scientists have no idea about. Nobody knows what the core of Jupiter is made of. It's all a raging mystery. Earth 2.0 About 111 light years away from us is the very best candidate for human habitability. It's Earth 2.0, the best and closest exoplanet that humans may one day migrate to. Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope even discovered water vapor in the atmosphere of the planet, suggesting it could have liquid water. It's a total anomaly, seeing as these types of Goldilocks planets are so rare they could be considered phenomena. The planet orbits a star slightly smaller than our Sun, yet it's in the perfect habitable zone, where it could be warm enough for liquid water and not so hot that it would make life impossible. The proper name for Earth 2.0 is K218b. It was first identified by NASA's Kepler spacecraft in 2015. Its mass is eight times that of Earth, meaning it's either a giant block of ice like Neptune or a rocky world with an atmosphere rich in hydrogen. Either way, it's the only planet right now located outside of our cozy solar system that has an appropriate temperature for supporting water. Crude models, according to National Geographic, have predicted average temperatures of between 100 and 116 degrees Fahrenheit, or 37.7 and 46.6 degrees Celsius. If we are ever to leave Earth and try to colonize a new world, this could potentially be it. Dark matter and dark energy. 
Dark matter is the craziest phenomenon in the universe, and something that scientists barely have a tangible grasp on. Dark matter and dark energy are both cosmic forces that nobody has been able to see or detect, but that scientists say are pretty much everywhere. It all began in 1998, when scientists realized the universe isn't just expanding, its expansion is getting faster. This implied that an unknown force is driving the expansion, pushing the universe out from every angle. This unknown force was dubbed dark energy. Dark matter is a little different than dark energy. It's confusing to say the least. It's invisible and doesn't interact with light or ordinary matter, yet there seems to be more of it than the normal matter that we can see. Scientists believe the phenomenon of dark matter is responsible for 25% of the universe. Around 70% of the universe is dark energy. Only 5% is actual matter that we can see and interact with. And that's basically as far as anyone has gotten. The good news is that with the recent launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists are hopeful that they'll be able to uncover some of the more complex cosmic mysteries of the universe. Hopefully, one of them is dark matter. Which of these amazing cosmic phenomena would you love to witness from the deck of a spaceship? Let me know in the comments, and thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, remember to hit subscribe for more awesome videos. Come back soon, and I can't wait to share more incredible phenomena and discoveries with you.